Recording is in progress. Hey everybody, how you doing? Well, first off, the weather. And for everybody that lives in my city of London, Ontario, it looks like old man winter is going to take his time leaving. It snowed this morning after we had like, I think, 15 degrees on the weekend. So, anyway, today I want to talk about the good people of London, Ontario, who provide, in my view, excellent service to their customers. And I also want to uh, give a shout out to a couple of uh, places that produce, I think, quality product. So without any further ado, let's go to mangoes. Of all things, you know mangoes are things you eat. Yeah. Well, I am have to admit, I'm not very knowledgeable on the subject of mangoes. I understand they're a fruit. I understand they're very tasty. And in fact, as I mention it, my uh, my mouth is watering to try one of those mangoes. But anyway, the reason why I'm discussing mangoes today is because, first of all, my son, my teenage son, uh, he's, I wouldn't say a totally picky eater. However, he likes to eat what he enjoys. And we're, we're all like that. So I said to him, what do you want for fruit? Because I'm the guy there's two of us that live together here, my son and myself, and I'm the guy that does the the grocery shopping. So he said, well, Dad, I enjoy mangoes. That was one of the examples he gave for a fruit that he enjoys eating. And he said to me, when I was visiting my friend recently, his mother offered mangoes, and they were easy to peel. They were juicy. Just great to eat. Overall, the whole experience is wonderful. And I listened to him and thought to myself, hey, I can do that. However, I'll be honest with you, I have never bought a mango in my life. So I said, how am I gonna do this? Well, best thing to do, I thought, was to venture to a place that sells mangoes naturally. And because I wanna support my local market, I thought I would head downtown to London and check out the marketplace. Now there are several vendors that offer a variety of fruit down there. However, there's one place that I always frequent because I enjoy talking to the staff there and they always seem um, receptive to my questions. They don't mind uh, offering suggestions and that appeals to me as it would most people. So I wanted to mention the group and I just bear with me while I turn my head. I have to read the receipt. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Fraumens, Fraumenes, Fraumenes, spelled F-R-A-U, M for Mary, E, N for Norman, I, apostrophe S, <coughs> pardon me, Fraumenes Fruits and Vegetables at 130 King Street in London, Ontario. Now, the gentleman I spoke to was the owner. His first name is Greg. And I said, Greg, I have to admit, I don't know anything about mangoes. So I spent a few minutes with him one day recently and he explained what to look for in mangoes. And I hope the lighting is okay here. I'm going to show you a mango that I purchased some time ago. Let's say about a week ago. This is the mango. It's been sitting out on our dining room table. And you notice how it's uh, a bit reddish on the ends. Here it's red here. I don't know if you can really see the redness or not. It's not a very good uh, very good quality shot. That's the mango I, I bought. And then Greg said, well, he brought a couple mangoes out. He brought one of these out to compare. And then he brought out one of these here. This is Let's move this one away, and there's the one that he brought out. 
So it's set in a couple days, it'll be ready to eat. And he said, if you push it, there'll be a little bit of softness in the skin. The little blemish you see there, that dark thing, that's not a problem, apparently. That's okay. And when you cut the mango, you have to cut it. Let's see if I can uh, take this out here a bit with the software. I just um, zoom down just a little more here. How's that? But he said, there, there's the mango, and he brought this one out, and then he brought this one out. So you can see the difference. So anyway, he said, these types of mangoes here may never ripe. So anyway, ripen to the point where you want to eat it. But this is just about ready to go. And then he explained to me, and he's much better at explaining things than I am, of course, but he, to cut it, because there's a a pit inside there, of course, for those that are familiar with mangoes, to cut the edge, cut it down, cut the edge down the other side, and he calls the contents underneath the skin meat. Okay, so we're looking forward to having that. My son cut one of the mangoes the other day that wasn't quite ripe, and to me it's really tart to taste, to my taste. Anyway, fantastic. So I'm trying to be a good dad and provide some nutrition for my son and to actually support the market as well. So there's my little blurb on, I'm going to zoom in the software a bit again. Okay, let's just move it in just a little bit here. High tech stuff folks, really moving up in the world. I've spoken to my son by the way about all the software I want and all the editing programs. And I have to upgrade the computer, and it's going to happen in July. All right, so we're almost there. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about is footwear. I'm going to lean over here, and I wear custom-made orthotic shoes. And for those people that wear custom-made shoes that have insole, orthotic insoles placed in them, they know I mean an extra depth shoe. And this is the bad boy that I wear. Amazing, huh? You know, it's the work on the front here. And that had to be built up. I had these shoes. Oh boy, I'm guessing 10 years. And this marvelous work, see the handiwork here? There's been quite a lot of wear and tear along here. Quite a lot of wear and tear, you can see. So that was corrected and fixed the other day. And this actually here, this is a pat, this is devil. I used to have a hole here in the shoe, and my friend uh, at the shoe repair place, he fixed that for me. And his name is Rob. I don't know his last name. Last names aren't that important to me. I say a lot of people, but anyway, um, he is the owner of a place at 130 King Street in the Market Tower in London called Mr. Quick Fix, and Quick is spelled with a K. All right. So he um, looked at my shoes. He shakes his head at times. He can't believe how I wear my shoes down. But I wanted to mention his um, his excellent service. And the other thing I looked into was orthotics. Now Rob doesn't build orthotics, but this is something I had done uh, about four or five years ago by a, a fellow who used to repair my shoes. And then unfortunately for me, he retired. So. I was stuck looking for somebody to repair my shoes. Went through three or four people until I found somebody, and that is Rob, Mr. Quick Fix, who uh, now repairs my shoes. Now those those are my orthotics, and I, I realize I need new ones. They're not in too bad a shape, actually. They're pretty good. 
So I decided to visit a place called, I have it written down here, MedPoint Healthcare Center. And I visited the other day, and I, the reason why I went there was because I was there a couple weeks ago for uh, an appointment, for a doctor's appointment. And I, and I was sitting in the waiting room and happened to notice to my right in the next room a machine where people stand on and they have their feet scanned. And it measures the quality of your, your, your standing position, how your feet rest on the floor, and that determines what type of insole you need to make minor corrections to the way you stand. And that's sponsored by Dr. Scholes. So I thought it was rather humorous. I stood on the machine. An appointment isn't required to do this. You just walk in stand on the machine and then push a button and the program takes over and provides instructions as to what you need to do next. Well, I took my shoes off, naturally, stood, placed my feet on the markings on the machine, on the, on the platform, pushed the start button and the first question the machine asked me was, did you take your shoes off? Huh, quite naturally I did already. So I realized that perhaps that was an indication of the quality of, of my, my stance and the way I, I, I rest on my feet. So anyway, this is the result of that test. There's the bottom, and there's the uh, insole. Now when I saw the package, they have on display several packages next to the machine and at the end of the analysis when the software scans your feet it indicates a number and mine was CF340 so it produced they have packages on display which are empty and what you have to do is walk next door with the package and for $39.95 plus tax the lady comes out with another package and there's the package right there comes out with the package with the orthotic inside. So I tried them on and I was surprised at first because it wasn't the full length orthotic, whereas actually that's what I wanted. It was a full length one. But that's okay. Dr. Scholes and the people at Dr. Scholes researched and decided they're, they're going to look after people's heels, offer the stability in the heel. So what I did, which was not recommended, not recommended anybody do this, but I put as a test, I put the new orthotic on top of the old one and wore them. Well, I noticed on my left foot, when I had the shoes on, there was no discernible difference at all in the support. But I did notice a difference in the right foot. So yes, I do feel better wearing your orthotics. However, in the future, I will have to order a full-length orthotic. Now, the reason why I did this, because my feet, let's see if I can turn this around here for you, my feet actually move down like this and turn in. So they're kind of like when I'm walking. Here, if here's, here it is level, and they turn down and to the right or pardon me, to the left. And that's how I walk with both both of my um, orthotics. So I need some support in the front. So that's why I elected again to put the Dr. Scholl's orthotic inside the, the old one. So not bad price. I mean, uh, I think new orthotics at MedPoint, she mentioned for a full length orthotic, there's somewhere in the neighborhood of $400, which is about an average price now to make custom made orthotics these days. So something to think about. If you see a machine at Dr. Scholl's and you want to, you have some foot pain, you want to consider. Um, Dr. Scholl's is not paying me for, for endorsing their product. I'm doing this as a good citizen and a good Samaritan. Just trying to show you an example here. That's plot. That's um, some kind of hard, hard plastic. That's a soft, tissue here.
covering. So, not bad. So I really enjoyed um, discovering that, and it helps quite a bit. So Dr. Scholes, shout out to Dr. Scholes and the people that do their work there. Well, let's return to the kitchen, because one of the things my son enjoys, like most teenagers, and I enjoy them, as you can probably see, we try not to eat a lot of meat. We try to eat healthy when we do eat meat. But one of the things we do as a treat is hamburger patties. And recently one of my friends, um, I mean, it's, it's a few months ago anyway, had opened a shop with Regal. That's spelled capital R-E-G-A-L. And then on the, online, and his name is Ron Cameron, my friend. So I wanted to look at some products on there. And one of them was, let's see if I can get the, the name, the single, it's single, patty. Let's move the thing over to the camera. It's called a single hamburger press. And I'm reading off the box. Excuse me for a second. While I grab this. But there's the box. It's a Western product. That's in en français. But here's the English. It's a burger press, a Western single hamburger press. And it says makes perfect patties every time. Alright, well in my case they do pretty good. They, um, I don't have the greatest culinary skill in the kitchen, but this makes it really simple. But it's uh, the hamburger goes in here, the ball of hamburger meat, and then there's a couple parts. You can unscrew this here. And there's another dial you unscrew here, you tighten here. You can see that really well. And you put the hamburger in. And one day I'll do a demonstration. I have a proper video camera. Press it down. I, the idea is to adjust the thickness of the patty with this platform here. And that's by adjusting this here. So you get the idea. So I adjust it and I press it down. Lay it flat on the countertop, of course, wherever you don't want to work, and then press it down. What I do is put wax paper on the bottom and put the meat on and then put wax paper on top and then press. And then I have, I made myself a stack of hamburger patties. Alright, so this is a fantastic product. Uh, it's not dishwasher friendly or safe. However, I wash this every time after I use it with um, good old fashioned dishwasher, dishwashing liquid, pardon me, and water. All right. So, soapy water, hot water claims that are really nice. Okay, so congratulations, Weston. Congratulations, Ron. And for Regal, for offering a fantastic product. Now, there are probably other products in the market that are similar, but that's the one I picked up because I wanted to support my friend's webpage and buy something that's really practical and handy. And of course, for me personally, easy to use. All right, so that takes care of that. And last but not least, I want to talk about a newspaper that I discovered recently. And I just absolutely love these columnists in this paper. And that paper, this is the second edition that I've come across. This is the Yonder, pardon me, Yonder. The London, London Yodeler. Fantastic. The columns in here, I want to shout out. It says, Arts News, Big on Attitude. And we're talking this these days about politics. You know that's a subject I love to hate, or hate to love. It's a love-hate relationship. I absolutely love these articles. Um, there's a columnist by the name of Herman Gooden. 
I re started reading his columns um, back in the 19, late 70s as a teenager. And he used to write about music. I believe he still does. But this article was about a teacher and a great soul. Mr. Ross Greg Woodman, who passed away this year. So that's the opening article. In this edition, then we have Earth Hour and Bed Bugs. Yes, there's a connection. And I'm going to pronounce her name incorrectly, and I apologize profusely. The columnist's name is Mary Lou Ambrogio. Ambrogio, did I pronounce that correctly, Mary Lou? I love you. Your column is absolutely amazing. I wish you all the best with every success with your column. Absolutely love your, your writing. Next one up, it's called, um, well, of course, under the, ca under the heading for Mary Lou's column that I mentioned, it says political heat. So she put a match under a few political derrieres to borrow the French and to be polite. But it's, uh, I, I like the article, Mary Lou, and, and for those that are watching this, I like the article because it is finally a refreshing point of view. Not because I agree with it or disagree necessarily. I like the, re the freshness of it because she doesn't mind laying her cards on the table, so to speak, and expressing her views openly and honestly. That's what we want in this city, especially during a, you're right, an election year. Okay, moving on to, so what now, question mark, is the next category. And this is another guy I absolutely love, Jason McDonald. I love you. This article is superb. I love the tongue-in-cheek humor. And I won't spoil it for anybody until you read it. And it's titled, Prime Minister Loses Face. Jason, Mr. McDonald, brilliant. Have a look, people. The London Yodeler. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Arts, news, attitude. So that's my little blurb for today. And I have a lot more stuff I want to talk about. You know, I always say this in my videos. A lot more stuff in the future to talk about. But for now, those are the things I wanted to, to share with you. Again, people in London, hang in there. I heard there's freezing rain today. Maybe some more snow. I installed our air conditioners this weekend. Put an air conditioner in the dining room. Put an air conditioner in my, well, with my help of my son in his room. Not ready yet. So anyway, next week it's going to melt back to 15, 20 degrees. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, hang in there. Spring has sprung and it is moving up. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. Okay. So thanks for listening. Thanks for viewing. Again, post your comments and your ideas, positive, negative. And London, remember, this year is the election year. Are you going to vote? Put my hand out there and point that finger. Are you going to vote? I think you used to looking at that camera. All right. So take care. Best. Peace. Love. To everybody. All right. And we will catch up with you soon. Bye for now.